Habits are the foundation. They are not the goal. Going beyond habits to making something a way of life or completely intuitive to who you are as a human being, that right there, that is the goal. Welcome to Build with Rob. It is your boy, Rob Dyrdek. It is your show with your friend. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. You listen to me. I'm just like your, your, you know, your, your, your rich uncle. You know what I mean? It's got, got, it's got everything together. You know what I mean? He's just, he's just happy. He's my, he's my, he's like my rich uncle. He's just really happy. You know, he's real organized. He's systematic. Uh, he's kind of a philosopher. If you catch him at a party, he's going to corner you and try to give you a, a life plan speech. You know what I mean? That's basically what, what rich uncle Rob will do to you. You know what I mean? I mean, look, look. You catch me at a party or in the streets, you catch me at a pool on vacation, I I will hold court and end up giving some sort of like machine mindset life speech. It's just, it's just what I do. It's what I do. And it's basically why I, I, you know, what this show is for you as my friend and listeners uh, that listen to this show, because it is an expression of my personal philosophy as I, as I live it and breathe it on an ongoing basis. Um, something that I'm passionate about, um, understanding deeper and, and creating a, an overall philosophy that has multiple mini philosophies inside of it that together make up one beautiful concept of the machine mindset that's just driving you, uh, to live a happy, harmonious, high quality existence. You know, I've preached it over and over because this is your life to create. And you get to make it whatever you want. You're the visionary of that life. And you have the ability to create whatever you want. And you you know it because you've listened to this show. Um, that it is all art, science, and magic, man. You you get to create it. Uh, the proven ways and, and, and different aspects of goal setting and evolution. All these things that are scientifically proven uh, will lead you to a magical life. Or at least you... Uh, creating your own magic and what I like to say, making your own luck, um, you know, through uh, applying this sort of philosophy and these principles. And, 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 you know, today's episode is really, really about sort of um, this idea of habits, right? And, and good habits and bad habits and how incredibly important habits are and, and, and how kind of like, you know, how, how, toxic the word habit even sounds you know what i mean because you 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 really tie all your bad habits to the word habit you know what i mean you don't you don't really tie all the good things you do to the word habit you usually look at like all these these bad habits that i have that i that i need to change you know and and you know the definition of a habit uh you know a regular tendency or practice especially one that is hard to give up Right. Like in that. And that's what it is. Right. Like something that's really hard to give up sounds negative. You know, it sounds like, oh, like, you know, I've got a bad habit of smoking cigarettes. You know what I mean? Oh, they're so hard to give up. It's a you got a habit, you know, and and, and on the positive side of, you know, habits like, oh, I just love taking supplements. Oh, I just love, I can't give up my supplements. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so hard for people to tie the positivity uh, of, of the word habit because it, by definition, it's this hard to give up uh, it is in, in a negative way instead of a positive way. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I just can't get myself to stop going to the gym. If I could just get myself to stop going to the gym, I got a I got a habit of going to the gym seven days a week. You know, it's it's an it's an unusual um, word um, that I think is is it's incredibly important. Don't get me wrong, uh, but I but I do think. You know, you want to use a habit to get yourself consistent, to get past the habit and get to where it is. It is intuitively who you are 
And it is you as it relates to the way that you live and who your actual being is. And and it's, you know, on the negative side, there's so much of you um, that gets built in a in a habitual way that it that it may take years, if not decades, for you to to unwind and pull out of your system. You know, it's like I have so many habits um, that were were part of what I developed at, at an early age in my life that I still deal with today. That I still deal with today. I was raised on sweet tarts and Fruit Loops. You know what I'm saying? I was raised on sweet tarts and Fruit Loops. I would go into the kitchen, into the candy drawer, and just stuff my face with candy right before I I had a delightful breakfast of Fruit Loops and maybe downed it with a Coke before I headed to school. Okay, like that was perfectly acceptable in the home that I grew up in. And that is a terrible way uh, to develop a core habit of of loving sugar uh, as part of a lifestyle. And that that really is something that I would uh, that I deal with to this day that I deal with to this day. You know, like I still have to go in and out of phases of like. Uh, finding myself just eating sugary stuff, um, you know, because I'm I'm feeding this ingrained aspect of of my life that it was formed in the the way of a habit in a young age that I carried on for my entire life until I, I got much older and began to get control of it, you know. But it it's the uh, you know you know and, and look the problem with a lot of habits is. Man, you know, they're passed down generationally. You know, they're you know, you you got stuff in your DNA that your parents push into you. Then then lifestyle that your parents help you uh to to create all of these bad habits because it's their way of life. This is their way of life. You know, I don't um look at my parents as bad parents because I would have fruit loops in a Coca-Cola before going to school when I was in high school. Um, and I have to put that disclaimer on it because my mother, uh, whenever I tell this story that I, you know, would eat Fruit Loops and have a Coca-Cola before I would go to school, she'd be like, that is not true. Maybe in high school. Right. And it's like, okay, then it's true. Like what? Like I wasn't saying like, oh, like, you know, in kindergarten, it's still, you know, I'm still 14 years old, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, But again, I don't I don't blame, um, you know, that that was just the way I don't blame my mother because that was the way that she ultimately um you know, lived her life and that was the way her mother lived her life and her, her father lived his life. So it's like that sort of aspect of kind of developing these more unhealthy habits as it relates to, um, you know, different things that get passed down through generations that that's just an example of like all of us, you know, end up, um, carrying all of these different different habits that that we have to break or new habits that we have to make on an ongoing basis you know if if you just want to keep becoming a better and better version of yourself right because you know why I preach like everything matters and and you're this deeply integrated uh, you know system of multiple systems and and the more you can design these systems and make these systems all integrate together that all help you to form better habits, to be healthier, uh, to to uh, manage your time and balance your life in a way that allows you to be more consistent with creating um, healthy habits that turn into a way of life is that it's important to look at yourself through the lens of all aspects of your life when it when it comes to habits that you're either ultimately trying to to get rid of or uh, trying to create new ones that you want to stick and evolve away from trying to do them to just being how you live 
And I can tell you that I'm, you know, you know, built was born and built through a system of like, you know, no aspect of my parents or the people around me ever even spoke about health. Um, you know, everything was really about raise a worker. You know what I mean? What were they trying to do? Raise a worker. They wanted me to, to in, in what's your best opportunity in, in Ohio? If your parents are trying to raise a worker, uh, they want you to, to finish high school and go to college so you can get a higher paying worker job and go work. But no aspect of them is like, hey, you know, like, you know, you should really take care of yourself and 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 learn about yourself and develop self-awareness and great communication skills and understand what are the things that that make you happy and, and build a life around that. that. That was certainly not the case, you know, and and. And so, um, you know, when you think about, you know, so much of the formation of your system um, and the habits that you have, they're, they're deeply ingrained, you know, and, and, you know, there's, there's a great book, very famous book, Atomic Habits, you know, where, um, you know, it's sort of a system, if you will, of when you, when you think about, um, you know, how to, how to take a habit and, and make it more consistent. Right. And they, they call it like a habit loop, you know, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying. You know, it's like, you know, you got to really want to do something. Um, you know, it's gotta be simple. Um, it, it's gotta be something that you know, you can do. And then when you do do it, that it rewards you. It gives you some sort of reward. Like that is sort of, you know, the the process of how do you create and and do something, uh, create that good habit. And then on how to eliminate a habit, you know, in you know, make it invisible, make it unattractive, make it difficult. Uh, like these sort of aspects of, um, you know trying to release habits that you have, you know, in, in the case of somebody that was raised on sweet tarts and fruit loops, you know, it would be like, don't put any sweet tarts and fruit loops in your house. You know, if you're trying to kick sweet tarts and fruit loops, cause what do you, he puts them in the, in the pantry. What are you going to be doing? You're going to be grazing on sweet tarts when you get a little bit hungry and you don't have any food in the house. Like, Oh, let me just dig in and take a handful of fruit loops. You know what I mean? Um, but that's sort of fundamentally, you know, how you would look at habits in if, if you're in a place of trying to, um, you know, like break a habit or create a new habit. And it's smart, right? It's very smart, you know, and, 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 I, and I think even, you know, uh, very much aligned where he even talks a lot about uh, how important systems are uh, to allow you to you know, develop a habit. And, and, and for me, you know, the, the only pathway, um, to truly create a, a real habit that turns into a way of life is, is consistency. You know what I mean? And consistency, um, is, is the most important aspect of it. You know what I mean? And, and there's layers to, to how committed you are to the different aspects of developing and building habits. Like, you know, sometimes you'll say, oh, you know, you can, you can, you can eat healthy, but there's degrees in what healthy is. You know what I mean? You can have, you know, a salad that's like 2000 calories that you stuff yourself and, and can, uh, you know, you know, barely walk. You know what I mean? It's, I guess it's better than having a, you know, 3000 calorie cheeseburger and fries that gives you the same feeling, but it's, you know, it's still, it's still relative to, um, you know, how, how you approach everything, right? Because discipline, you know, is, is, is important to get consistent. Um, but you can't be a disciplined dabbler. You know what I mean? We, we, we so often dabble with discipline. 
you know, where we like, we're not fully committed uh, to being deeply consistent. We just, we know we need to, to, to get better and we know we need to be disciplined. So we don't put any measurement. We don't do anything to track it. We just start doing it and, and all we do it a little bit less, but we still give ourselves mental credit for it. We, we will lie to ourselves and say like, oh, we still got in the gym, even though you went down and were in the gym and just barely did anything. You still like, oh, I was there. And yes, that's that's uh, better than not being there. But that's when you, you, you're dabbling in discipline. And if you're dabbling in discipline and inconsistent, it's never going to become a habit. Uh, and if you don't make it a habit, you are never going to get to a place where it is just the way that you live, you know? And, and for me, you know, the most powerful thing that you can do is, is create some sort of clear, measurable, uh, you know, goal towards creating that habit, whatever that habit may be, you know? And, and, you know, why I love to track, um, my core health, uh, stuff every single day is in, is now, um, this more fun sort of way of existing to see the numbers, right? Where in the beginning, man, I really needed to track, uh, did I get up at five? Did I, uh, meditate? Did I brain train? Did I eat clean? Did I not drink? Like, did I get in the gym? Like I, I needed to track those to get myself to do it in the beginning. And to me, like measuring it and creating that sort of system of just tracking it each day, you know, it, it kept me honest, kept me motivated and, and, ultimately gave me a more satisfactory feeling when I was more consistent at it because I could see that more consistent number. Then then the more consistent you get, um, the better you feel about it. And then ultimately, um, after a certain point, it is now... Um, no longer taking discipline and you're no longer looking at it from the lens of like, oh, I have to do this. And it eventually becomes what you do. It is just who you are, a way of life and the way that you actually live. And, and to me, when I, when I talk about, you know, you know, the idea of creating great habits is, is not the goal, but just the beginning of pushing all the way through to, to, it is a way of life and who you are and the way that you live and eating healthy every day, because you would think like, why would I not eat healthy? You know, getting in the, the gym, just thinking like, why would I even allow myself to lose progress on how much progress I've made and how great I feel by being in here consistently? Like, you know, meditating, like instead of being like, oh, I got too much going on. How can I quiet down and get there? And it just being like, if I don't meditate, I'm not going to have the energy and the quality of life. All of this stuff together is is a shift in mindset uh, when it goes from taking discipline to create a habit and turns into an effortless, intuitive way of being. That is the ultimate automation. You know what I mean? That that intuitiveness and way of living your life um, is another form of automation, you know, and and it is one of the most powerful ones um, because it has an extremely high output um, with very little mind share and little, very little effort to actually execute it, you know. And and to me, it's like, you know, when when you think about um, you know, how quickly, uh, certain aspects of bad habits can compound on top of each other. You know, it's like, they just, they pile up so quick, you know what I mean? And, and, and to me, like, e even though I will go all the way back and say, Hey, if I don't eat, um, if I eat clean and don't drink, that I'm going to reach this higher plateau in life. I'm going to be more consistent, you know, whatever, whatever. That's my whole thing of like, if I can just, um, you know, like do just that 
by itself and make it the most consistent, then everything else falls in line. And for me, it's the hardest one because of the way that I was raised, you know, and 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 the sense of something that's embedded in me that I'm I'm continuing uh, continually fighting, and why, you know, tracking it and putting measurement to it uh, is so so important for me. You know what I mean? And and not only giving me motivation, but then keeping me more consistent that, that, uh, you know, prevents me from, from dipping back, you know, and, and, um, you know, cause you know what it is. It'll be like one too many drinks leads to like, Oh, here we go. You, you start eating a little bit soft and then boom, you skip a gym day. Oh, you skip a meditation. Like now it's like, Oh man, like, like, uh, here I am like, you know, like thinking about it again, um, and and sad that I've drifted into this space. But the difference is, is once it's like part of the way that you live, it's a, it's a it's almost like you have to do so much to actually not do that. When you start consciously needing to to do it with purpose, um, that's when you know it is is much more intuitive than just a habit. You know, like when you really. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to say like you feel guilty, but you're at least conscious of the fact, um, that, you know, what you are putting in your body or what you're doing is going to have an effect on, on all the different aspects uh, of your life. Um, and you are prevent yourself from doing it because you just don't even want to feel that way. That, that is when it is, it is much more intuitive, you know, and, and everything in your life, whatever it may be, um, will be dictated um, by turning those uh, high quality actions uh, that make the best version of you on an ongoing basis, on a continual basis to where it's the only thing you know what to do and want to do. That, that is where you're trying to drive everything while then constantly being on the lookout for those embedded habits and triggers that always get you. You know what I mean? Because I, I will I cannot even fathom for how disciplined in, in like how evolved I am, how aware I am that I could still I got caught in a candy run. In Halloween this year. Last year I didn't get caught in it. Last year I had the strength of fighting through it. And and this year I got caught in it. And it's like I I know that like, you know, you 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 cannot do it. You cannot allow it to get to you. Um, but it still happens when it is embedded in you and it is sort of a way of life that you had at an earlier age, like it almost never leaves you. You know what I mean? It's like bad habits that turn into like triggers that are almost like part of your existence that you got to fight, uh, and, and create systems and habits to keep you away from, those bad habits that are intuitively a part of your makeup is is going to be this ongoing struggle i think for everybody for the rest of their lives it's it's very similar i think to um you know addiction and people that like you know um are addicts that that basically are are spending their entire life creating systems and better habits to avoid ever going back uh, to whatever they may be addicted to, I think um, each of us has, you know, so many more of similar type of things that aren't as damaging, um, you know, a as it relates to, you know, detrimental to your overall existence, but are still, um, and you know, a significant part of our lives that we want to continually get more consistent at the high quality, good things in our lives that turn from habits to our way of life that ultimately are there to defend all the sweet tarts and Fruit Loops we want to eat. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, I, I only say it to the idea of, you know, you, you just have to continually think about, um, you know, like, 
getting stuff from a really hard uh, state, you know, like something that you have to try hard to do, that you have to think about all the time, that you have to commit the energy to being disciplined to where you even think about it. Like I got to, I got to have better habits. You just want to do whatever you can uh, to get consistent enough to get those things out of the place of using energy to think about them and get them to a place where they are intuitive to the way that you live. Because that is where that high quality, harmonious existence lives, you know. And that's all I'm looking for. You know, I'm getting better and better at it on an ongoing basis. And I hope that each and every one of you uh, is is committed and trying the same thing because that's really, really what it's all about. Just trying to live a high quality, harmonious life. All right, thank you again for listening to the show. Appreciate you guys. You know what it is. Like, subscribe, tell a friend, share with somebody, repost it, screenshot it, talk about it. I don't know. You know what it is. Uh, find us at DeerDickMachine.com. Catch us on our YouTube uh, catch us on social media. Be a part of the lifestyle. Uh, until next time, you know, you know, you got to keep those eyes sharp. 2020 on the future. You got to write it down and write it down and write it down and write it down till you understand it. And then you got to push, 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 push till it's real. Until next time, see it, believe it, do it. <laughs>